Hello, my name's Jason Carlion, I'm the Resuscitation Manager for Yorkshire Ambulance Service. So we're going to teach you the skills to perform CPR. CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. This is required when a patient's in the cardiac arrest. And the cardiac arrest is the ultimate medical, medical emergency when the patient's heart stops beating and you perform CPR to take over the pumping of the blood around the body. Some people worry unnecessarily about performing CPR, afraid that they may do something wrong. You needn't worry, doing something is better than doing nothing and increases the chances of survival significantly. You may break a rib when performing CPR. This is nothing to worry about. This can happen, but again, a broken rib is better than the patient not surviving at all. We're going to use this equipment which we've been supplied as part of British Heart Foundation's Nation of Life Savers campaign. Every school was supplied with 35 of these mannequins. What we're going to do is we're going to break the training down into bite-sized chunks. So we're going to look at teaching you how to recognise a cardiac arrest and call for help, how to perform chest compressions and how to do the breathing. And then we'll put all that together. So the first thing we're going to teach you is how to recognise a patient's in cardiac arrest. First thing when you're approaching a patient who appears to be collapsed on the floor is make sure that it's safe for you to do so. Make sure there are no dangers to yourself and you're going to be in harm. On approach to the patient, if you see them laid on the floor, give them a shout. Hello, can you hear me? Just be mindful of the fact that the patient may be deaf. It doesn't appear to be a response, so I'm going to give a gentle shake and shout. Hello, can you hear me? There's no response. The next part of checking for a response and see whether the patient's in cardiac arrest is to see whether the patient's breathing. And the way that we do that is you need to get down and you need to do a head tilt chin lift. And that is putting one hand on the forehead and one hand under the chin and gently tilting the head back. At the same time, you need to put your head down next to the, the mouth and you're listening for breathing. You're feeling any breathing against your cheek and you're watching for the chest rising. And you do this for up to 10 seconds to establish whether there's breathing. <clears throat> so the way we do that, head on, hand on the forehead and fingers under the chin, gently tilt the head back and put, put your face next to the patient's mouth and you're listening for breathing, you're feeling any breathing against your cheek and looking for the chest rising. And there is no breathing. So we've established that the patient isn't responsive and isn't breathing. You need to be aware that if a patient does take an occasional gasp, this is not considered normal breathing and is considered a cardiac arrest. So we need to shout for help and we need to get somebody to ring 999 and call for an ambulance and get that ambulance on the way as well. Can I get some help please? Can you ring an ambulance and let them know we've got a patient that's not breathing and then come back and let me know that you've done that? To perform chest compressions you use the heel of your hand in the centre of the chest between the nipple line and you want to be pressing about five to six centimetres down on the chest and you, you perform 30 chest compressions. So using the heel of the hand in the centre of the chest arms straight, move your body over the chest and perform 30 chest compressions at five to six centimetres. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. So the next thing we need to show you is how to perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth ventilations. The likelihood is it will be one of your family members or friends that you witness in a collapsed state. We're going to teach you the skills how to perform mouth to mouth, but if you don't feel that you can do it, you don't have to do it. You can simply just do chest compressions alone. To perform mouth to mouth ventilations, we need to repeat the head tilt chin lift manoeuvre that we showed you earlier. So you put your hand on the forehead and fingers underneath the chin and gently tilt the head back. At the same time, you also need to pinch the nose closed. You then seal your lips around the patient's lips, looking down the chest, and you're watching for the chest rising and falling with your breathing. You need to perform two ventilations between each set of 30 compressions. So in order to do that, head tilt, chin lift, gently tilt the head, pinch the nose. I've found a patient collapsed and making sure that it's safe for me to approach and there's no dangers to myself. Hello, can you hear me? There's no response. 
Hello, can you hear me? It doesn't appear to be a response. I'm going to do a head tilt, chin lift, and listen for breathing. There is no breathing. Can I get some help, please? Can you ring an ambulance and tell them we've got a patient who's not breathing and then come back and let me know that you've done that? I'm going to start chest compressions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Two ventilations. Repeat the chest compressions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, ninety, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, three, four, and five, and six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Repeat the ventilations. And repeat this process until help arrives or until you become exhausted, but try and get somebody else to take over. So we've taught you how to recognise a cardiac arrest, we've taught you how to perform chest compressions, and we've also taught you how to do ventilations should you feel that you can do it. Then we've also shown you how to put the whole sequence together. Just remember, doing nothing is the worst thing you can do. This resource has been made in the hope that these vital life-saving skills can be shared with as many people after the event as possible.